Now it's time to take data in a data table and write an equation for it. Write an equation to represent the data in that data table. I'm going to take the first step out of this for you. I'm going to make it easier for you by telling you that of the three data tables we're going to look at, they're all linear. So that, what that means is we know that the equation that we'll write to represent the data in all of three of these tables will be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form. And hopefully you remember, in slope-intercept form, the m represents our slope, and the b will represent our y-intercept. So that's what the two things will be that we are going to have to figure out in order to write this equation. We're going to have to figure out what the slope is in each data table and what the y-intercept is for each data table. And we're going to do this without the luxury of looking at a graph. We're only going to look at the numbers in a data table. So let's start with this first one here. We've got the x's on top, we've got the y's underneath. And let's start with this. We want to, remember what, the two things we want to solve for. We want to get the m, the slope, and the b, the y-intercept. So those are the two things that we want to get. First thing, remember that the m, the slope, is equal to rise over run. The slope is equal to rise over run. So what really that is looking at is we're looking at how much is it going up and down versus how much is it going from left to right. To figure that out, what we can do is let's look at the x's and the y's. Which number, which of these numbers deals with the up and down portion of the line? Well, that's going to be our y's. Which number, x's or y's, deals with side to side? Well, those are the x values. So let's look at how much the y's are changing, the change in y, divided by the change in x. Alright, so let's see what they're doing. The x's are going plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. The x's are all going up by 1. What are the y's doing? From negative 3 to negative 5 is minus 2. From negative 5 to negative 7 is also minus 2. From negative 7 to negative 9 is minus 2, and negative 9 to negative 11 is also minus 2. You would expect these numbers to all be the same because I told you right up front that this is going to be a linear relationship. So what is the rise over run now? The rise over run, the change in y up and down, this is always negative 2. How about the change in x? How much is it going from side to side? That is going up by 1. So every time we go over 1 on the x-axis, we're going down 2 on the y-axis. Over 1 on the x, down 2 on the y. And so the rise over run is negative 2 over 1, or just simply negative 2. So that's the first part. We got our slope. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to get our y-intercept. That's really easy to do when you're given the graph. But what can you do, how can you get that if you're only given the data table? Well, let me just show you a graph first off. If you are given a graph, this is just a random graph, this line does not represent the data in the table I just showed you. But how would you get the y-intercept here? Of course the y-intercept is where our line crosses our y-axis. There's our y, there's our x. So our line crosses the y-axis right there. What are the coordinates of that point? Well, the coordinates are how much do we go left or right on the x-axis to get to this point? Well, we don't have to go at all. We don't have to move either way. So the coordinates of this point, the x-coordinate will be 0. The y-coordinate, how many uh, numbers up the line do we have to go? We have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the coordinates of that point the y-intercept are x is 0, y is 6. x is 0, y is 6. So the key point here is the y-intercept always occurs when x equals 0. When 
x equals 0, the y coordinate is our y intercept. When x is 0, the y coordinate is our y intercept. Well, let's go back to our data table now. Remember what I just said, when x is 0, the y coordinate is our y intercept. Well, here's x is 0. The y coordinate must be our y intercept. When x is 0, y is negative 3. So b must equal negative 3. So we got the slope. Now we just figure out what the y intercept is. The last step is to just simply write this as an equation. And so the equation will be y is equal to our slope m, which we figured was negative 2, times x, plus our y-intercept, which we have now determined is going to be negative 3. So there's our equation. Let's look at another one. Let's look at another one. This is a little bit tricky. I think the more you see and the more you do, especially, uh, the easier this will become. But what are we looking to do? We're looking to write the equation of the data in this table. I told you that this is already linear, so we're going to be looking to write this in the form of y equals mx plus b. The two things we want to solve, we want to figure out what is the m, the slope, and what is b, the y-intercept. So those are the two things that we will want to figure out. Remember our slope is going to be rise over run, or the change in y divided by the change in x. Well, let's see what these changes in y and changes in x are. So the x is changing by plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So the change in x is 1 every time. What's the change in y? Looks like it's plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. So rise over run, change in y over change in x. The change in y was 4, the change in x is 1, 4 divided by 1 is simply 4. So our slope, the m in our equation, will be 4. What's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is, remember from last time, whatever the y-coordinate is when x equals 0. So we look in the data table to find where x equals 0, the y-coordinate will be the y-intercept. Uh-oh, there is no 0. So we have to figure it out. And in this case, thankfully, it's not going to be too terribly difficult. We can see that this is going up by 1, so let's just add 0 to our data table. And we're going to be increasing by 1 from 0 to 1, so that makes sense. But what would the number there have to be? Remember, the y's are always changing by 4. Every time x goes up by 1, y goes up by 4. x is plus 1, y is plus 4. So from this number to this number has to be plus 4 as well. So what plus 4 equals 9? What plus 4 equals 9? Well, this has to be 5. So that one has to be 5. So now, when x is 0, y equals 5, now we have our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is 5. So we solve the two things we need to figure out to write the equation. We need the slope m and the y-intercept b. So let's write our equation. y is equal to our slope it was positive 4 times x plus the y-intercept of 5. There it is. One more for you. One more. So there's another uh, data table. This is a linear relationship a linear relationship, so if we're going to write the equation in the form of y equals mx plus b, the two things we need to figure out, as always, are the slope m, the y-intercept b. Let's work on that slope first. Let's see what the change in x is and the changes in y will be. Here x is going up by plus 2, x is going plus 2, x is going up plus 2, x is going up plus 2. So here this is different from the others. 
x is going up by plus 2 every time. The other two examples, we had x increasing by 1 every time. Let's look at how y's are changing. From 1 to 7, this is plus 6, plus 6, plus 6, plus 6. 7 plus 6 is 13, 13 plus 6 is 19, 19 plus 6 is 25. So let's get our slope then. The m, the slope, is going to be, of course, rise over run, or the change in y, divided by the change in x. What is the change in y, the rise? We are going up by 6 every time. The change in x, the run, the side to side motion, is changing by 2 every time. We have a little division problem now. To get the slope, to get the m, we just do 6 divided by 2 and we get 3. So the slope must be 3. Every time x goes up by 1, y will go up by 3. x goes up by 1, y will go up by 3. The last part, of course, is getting the y intercept. Remember, whenever x equals 0, the y-coordinate is our y-intercept. Thankfully, this time, 0 actually is in the data table for us. So when x is 0, y equals 1. 1 is our y-intercept. So let's write our equation now. y is equal to our slope 3 times x plus the y-intercept is 1. So there's our equation simple as that. The more you do of these, the more sense it will make uh, and it will get easier and easier uh, as you're writing these linear equations based on the data tables.